All right, so our next comprehension technique is something called text marking. And text marking is a strategy that is near and dear to my heart. It is a metacognitive strategy, which is just that fancy word again for thinking about how we are thinking. And what this really does is it helps our students understand when they stop understanding what they're reading. So very valuable strategy. And one that I've used before, I know a few years ago when I was in graduate school, we had this one particular class and I had this book that I fondly referred to as The Blue Book of Death. That sucker was about this thick. And it was very dense reading, a lot of research, a lot of studies, a lot of facts, statistics, and things. Very hard for me to get a hold of. And so I would use this text marking strategy to help me. And then when I ran into a passage or a paragraph that I didn't understand, I'd use one of the fix-up strategies that we're going to learn about in the next section to help me through it. So um, this is, again, a way to help students monitor their comprehension and make sure they're understanding as they go through. We're going to be using three symbols for text marking that we can see here toward the top of the screen. We're going to use a check mark to say I knew this before. We're going to use an exclamation point for saying this is new to me and we're going to use a question mark to say I'm not exactly sure what this means. As you're setting up to do this and maybe you're modeling this for your students, a couple of suggestions that I would have before we actually dive into the modeling that I'm going to do. One of which is make sure as always that you're using some instructional material at the student's instructional level. Don't want to do something that's too easy, don't want to do something that's too hard. Also it's great like the paper that we have have here to have some wide margins so we can go ahead and make those text marks in that margin. So, um, so again we're going to use that check mark, the exclamation point, and the question mark as we go through. And I've got a we owe a friendly reading here, something about um, young people and their job search. So let's tackle this here. So I'm going to read this paragraph by paragraph by paragraph, three paragraphs in total. And I'm going to go through and use those text markings as I need to, to monitor my comprehension. So here goes. It says, um, fair or not, young folks can be perceived to have a poor work ethic along with a sense of entitlement, an overly casual physical appearance, weak communication skills, especially when dealing with mature adults, and questionable time management skills. Okay, so as I'm reading this, I'm going to put things in the margin. Um, I certainly could see that sense of entitlement. I know I'm a, a parent of two kids, and I know I see that sometimes with my kids, and I'm trying to work that out of them. So that's definitely something I knew before. And I've also seen these weak communication skills. So I'm following this paragraph pretty closely. I've seen that with my kids. A lot of times they're intimidated to talk with an adult. So um, I knew that before. Let's look at paragraph two. It says, if you want to be viewed as a competent up and coming contributor, you'd better be able to sufficiently address any concerns in those areas. Start with your attitude. Enthusiasm and desire count for a lot, especially when most candidates have little work experience. Many times the job will go to the one with a positive attitude who shows persistence. In other words, they want it. Okay, I knew about having to address issues in work ethic, um, time management, all those, so I'm following that. Um, hmm, this is one thing that I didn't know, that if you don't have a lot of work job experience, the job is going to go to somebody with a positive attitude who shows persistence. So I'm going to go ahead and put an exclamation point there. Okay, last paragraph says, in today's culture where everyone gets a trophy for showing up, Hmm. Be sure to avoid coming across as having a sense of entitlement. Employers owe you nothing. You'll start at the bottom. It's not about you. It's about demonstrating how you can add value to them. Okay, so I'm not particularly following this trophy for showing up thing, so I'm going to put a question mark there. But I certainly do know that employers owe us nothing and that we've got to start at the bottom. I've certainly seen that in my work career at the various places where I've worked, so I'm following that part. So I want to go back and really get to understand what they mean by getting a trophy for showing up. So this is just a small model of how this might look to do this text marking. Now, 
your turn. You're going to have right below this an opportunity to download a document and practice this with text marking, or if you have some other reading that you'd like to practice this with as well, something that's laying around as you're watching, feel free to, uh, to do that. Maybe uh, if you're at work, the uh, TABE testing manual, that would be something good, or the CASAS testing manual, that would be some interesting reading. So um, text marking, great strategy, helping students to realize when they no longer understand what they're reading. So happy text marking.